Okay, folks. So a question from from a client over the last couple of days. The question was, and just give you some background here. How did how did I make the transition from working in the offline world to working full time online? And and so I'm going to try to give this to you folks in as concise as as possible. But I'm also going to I'm a I'm going to make this a bit of an editorial because I don't want this to just be about me. I want this to be how can you how can you learn from this and how can you adapt it to your own scenario because there's so many different scenarios. I mean, some people start online um, and they're in order to start they have to only work an hour a day until they've got some money coming in and then they can double it to two hours a day until they have more money coming in and then they can double it to three four hours a day and they can quit their part time job working somewhere and when they have more money coming in and then once they have enough money coming in to replace their full time income then they can quit. And so you literally and then you have other people that just got fired from a job, they got a, a little pension or they you know they've 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 got uh unemployment or something, they say, you know what, I'm tired of this, I'm not going to go get another job, I'm going to go full-time online, and they, they have a nest egg, you know, and then you've got other people that, you know, are working a full-time job, but they say, you know what, um, I'm, I, I don't like this nine-to-five thing anymore, I'm going I'm, to, I'm just, you know, you know I, I'm just going to work a this business full time, and I'm going to literally, from the time I get home from six o'clock until the time I go to bed at midnight, I'm going to build this business. I'm going to treat it like it's my second full time job. I'm going to go for a year and not sleep a whole lot, kind of like I did when I was in college. And I'm going to run on caffeine. And um, by the way, I'm not recommending you know tearing your body up like that. But hey, let's face it. I mean, through the course of life, when we're in college, when we go through relationship problems, you know, when we're we're when you know we we're, we're building a business, I mean, a lot of times we tear our bodies down for a year anyway, so, I mean, you know, maybe there's a place to say, you know what, let's push yourselves to the wall for a year, okay, I'm, I'm by the way, I'm, I'm not encouraging you to do that, I'm saying that probably most people that become successful at anything in life have pushed themselves to the limit for some period of time, I know I've done it repeatedly in the past, not the best thing for the body, okay, but often that's how success happens, so, the thought here is, all I want to say is there's lots of different ways that people get into online marketing, whether it's an hour a day, whether it's full-time, whether it's full-time, I have to make this work, or I have to go back to work, or I have to make this work, or my family's going to go hungry, or, you know, you, 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 you're, you know, you're getting ready to retire, you've been in business for 25 years, you're getting ready to retire, you're going to have a natural retirement, you're going to get the gold watch and the award, and you're going to have a little pension, but the pension isn't going to allow you to travel as much as you'd like, and so you're going to start a business. So there's so many different reasons why people start businesses. I, I don't want... I don't want you to walk away from listening to what I'm just going to share and go, well, you know, if I can't do it the way Sean did it, then nah, I can't do it. So I don't want that to be the case. I'm going to try to tie some things together here, okay? Um, and before I give this, let me tie the one piece in here, okay? Sometimes I have people come to me that say, you know, I've only got an hour a, a, a day to work, uh, but I want to have a full-time income in three months. Okay, L let me just say this. It's not going to happen. Okay, you, it's a dream. You want full-time results? You put full-time effort in. Okay. You know what? I'm not even going to elaborate on that. I'm just going to I'm just going to leave it right there because of what I just shared with you. Start with an hour, leverage it to two hours, leverage it to three hours, and 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 move up on to that point. Okay. Somebody starting out with full time, just because you put in full time today for one month doesn't mean you have a full-time income in 30 days you may do the same amount of work but building an online business there is an exponential effect to it okay but you know if you look at what i've done in this business over the last five years you know i built a strong foundation i mean my goodness i still get traffic from articles i wrote five years ago what does that mean it means that when i wrote the article the first 30 days i didn't get its full results I still don't have the full results from articles I wrote 60 months ago. I'm still making money on those articles, and maybe I still will be in five years from now. Okay? So what that means is there's an exponential long-term effect. So the drawback to something that's exponential and long-term is it's not quite like winning the lottery and you get a check for $3 million 
and, you know, you cashed out right now. It's something that builds over time. And building an online business generally takes time. And, and, you know, that's one of the reasons why when we see these online businesses, so often successful online businesses are started in garages, started in college rooms, they're started in dorm rooms, they're started in spare bedrooms. They're not often started. You know, if you look at, you know, the top 50 Internet businesses right now, where they started in a boardroom with a, a $50 million IPO by a bunch of people that have never done Internet marketing before and say, we're going to do an IPO for $50 million, we're going to build a big business. You know, my guess is 99% of those businesses fail. Why? Because it's the very nature, in my, I believe it's the very nature of Internet marketing is very, very organic thing, and it's very difficult to just throw big dollars at it and make it happen. It, I believe that in most cases it takes that human, that human interaction. And again, I think that's why we see so many of the, even the very biggest companies today that are involved in, in the Internet world or that even involved in software or anything like that, so many of them were started by, by in, in college rooms, in in basements, in, in garages, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so, so you kind of go to where I was, okay? And, and, and I was working, um, let me just give you some background. Um, I, I've kind of been a self-starter for ever since I was in, co in, in high school. I remember when I was, I believe it was 10th grade, maybe it was 11th grade, um, was, it was not my first entrepreneurial adventure. Um, but I, I don't want to go back any, any younger than, than high school for entrepreneurial adventures, okay? Um, but just, just having some thoughts in my mind about some of the entrepreneurial adventures even before that. But if we just go to high school, I remember one of my first entrepreneurial adventures was, um, I, I believe I was in a Spanish class or German class, and uh, I was uh, – I, I got into the club, so I guess in high school they had some Spanish club. A long time ago, so and talk, I rarely ever talk about this, so I was trying to put all my thoughts together here. And so I was in, I believe it was 11th grade, I was in a Spanish club, and we did this fundraiser thing. I don't remember what we were raising money for, but, you know, we sold uh, Snickers bars and m bars and things like that for, uh, I don't know, 50 cents or a dollar, and we were raising money for the Spanish club. And it was like a two-week push, and um, I found that I was pretty good at selling these candy bars, and, and I didn't even have to really sell them. Just, um... You know, people knew me in the classes, and, and so what I would do is I'd go by Spanish club in the morning, and I don't remember the details on this. It could have been the night before me. I'd fill my backpack up with these, these Spanish club, um, the Snickers bars and, and uh, Kit Kats and M&Ms and all this kind of thing. I have a backpack full, and what happens is after a few days, everybody in class knew that first period, Sean was going to have a backpack full of candy bars, and I mean... You know, memory serves me right. It would not be unusual for 10 or 15 or 20 people in the class to fork over 50 cents or a dollar for these candy bars. And, um, it, you know, it, and seven periods would, would go by, and I'd just make sure I always had candy bars. And there's a really funny thing happened, and I'm fuzzy on exactly the details. I don't know if it was a week or two weeks. But anyway, at the end of this drive for Spanish Club, you know, we collect everything, and I don't know how I fared if I was number one or number eight or whatever in the contest, but... You know, the first day that happened after the, this, this push was over, everybody says, okay, you know, I need my Kit Kat bar for the morning. And I go, oh, well, we're not selling them anymore. Okay, well, I don't know if it takes 10 people or 15 people or 20 people to come ask me about a candy bar before I go, wait a second. Could I continue to supply candy bars even though I'm no longer fundraising? And so I, 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 I remember... I, I didn't have a car, and so I remember walking to the local Kmart and pricing out candy bars. And I found that I could buy, like, a box of 10 for a dollar, and I could sell them for the 50 cents or whatever I'd been selling them for. And, and so when you go back to that was one of my very first entrepreneurial adventures, and I've, I've done a lot of things more to that over the years. And, and so in, in, in a lot of ways, I'm very different from – the person that's been, if you've been in corporate business for 20 years and you've never sold anything and, and you, you've never started business and you've never incorporated a business and 
you know, you never put flyers out and hope that somebody would call so you'd make the money to pay the bills this month, then I, I, I want to be very, very careful here that, that I'm, I'm in no way, I, I mean, I, I, I will say this, I think that, that you have not experienced the entrepreneurial spirit yet. I think that's a fair thing to say. And until you have experienced that entrepreneurial spirit, when, when you go try to build an online business in the evening, you you don't have that entrepreneurial drive to kind of feed on. One of the things that I've taught about in the past, and I'm going to touch on it right now, is this idea that entrepreneurs really have a sense that they get paid based on what they're worth, okay? And so what that meant was that, and by the way, my candy bar earnings back in high school went to help me buy my first truck, okay? I mean, I put some of that money in the bank, and it went towards my first truck, okay, my first vehicle. And what, what happens with entrepreneurs is that, they are very tied to this idea that they get paid for the exact work that they do, meaning that if I sold a candy bar, I made money. People that are entrepreneurs, they've not doors. If they sell something at the door, they make money. If they're involved in network marketing, they sell somebody, and the person sells something, they make money. Okay, now, with a corporate job, with any job, where you either work 9 to 5 or 8 to 3 or the midnight shift or anything, even if you know you'll get fired if you don't perform and you get a little bonus if you overperform, the truth of the matter is on Friday or Monday or the first of the month, you know that as long as you're employed, you're going to get a check and it's going to have some range. It's probably going to cover all the bills. And it's gonna, it's going to, it's gonna have some range. You can, you guarantee that money every single month, as long as you maintain some minimal standard, or the company doesn't go bankrupt, or you know whatever the case is. But an entrepreneur, like the truest, deepest down entrepreneur, they have been involved in a business where they worked 90 hours a week for 10 weeks and didn't take home a penny before they made their first sale. What happens is that entrepreneurial background develops a grit, a grit in entrepreneurs that allows them to work really hard and hardly make any money because of the future that they have in mind. People that are entrepreneurs that have I'm not just I'm not just talking about you've been an entrepreneur, you went and bought a franchise, you, you had some money in the bank to fall back on for three years because the franchise ordered you to have so much money in the bank. And, you know, the first day you sold three hamburgers, and the second day you hold, sold five, and, and you finally, you're, you're, you're losing money still at the third month, but, hey, you had money coming in, and maybe you're even paying yourself a little bit of salary. And, you, you, you know, I'm talking about this died in the core entrepreneur that maybe has gone a month without a sale. Maybe has gone three months without a sale. Maybe knocked doors and knew that if they didn't make a sale today, they couldn't put gas in the car to go back out tomorrow. Okay? And, and, and the truth of the matter is, you know, if you look at some of the, 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 the um, you know, if you, if, if you look at some of, you know, the Facebook and Googles and Apples and Microsofts of the world, and if you read those folks' biographies, you know, I, I'm just reading Steve Jobs' biography um, tonight. Last night was my third night of reading, about three quarters through it. And, you know, one of the things that was defining for Steve Jobs was when they made that first, I, I don't remember if this was uh, the Apple one or it was before that, I guess. It was the very first one that they created, and he was in his garage and I uh, had the, you know, they, they got this electronic store that said, okay, fine, I'll buy a hundred units and I'll pay you five hundred dollars for them, okay? And it, I think the, the the cost of materials was going to be like two hundred a piece. I don't remember the exact numbers, but if you have the book, you can go look at it and you read it and you see it. And I mean, literally, talk about they had to go out and they had to borrow money, take out a, a, a loan to be able to purchase 
the parts to make this happen, and then they had to put them all together, and he brought all his friends over to help them assemble these, and if they didn't sell them all or they didn't work, I mean, talk about ruined for life type of an experience, okay? And obviously, that's a different experience than, than knocking doors and, and kind of being right there at the wall. And we, we could do this with with probably all of them. We could do this with Bill Gates. We could do this probably with Russell Br- um, Russell, Br- um, Russell Branson. We could probably do this with, um, with I mean, my goodness, we could probably do this with Timothy Ferris. We could probably do this with Oprah Winfrey. Winfrey. We could do this with Mark Zuckerberg. We, we could find a moment where in their entrepreneurialism, they were doing something at the end of the wall. They had to stay up all night to be able to make it happen. They slept for an hour in the afternoon. They had to stay up the whole next night. I just recently read Paul Allen's biography, and it was just amazing the nights that those folks would just stay up all night long to be able to code, go sleep for a or two, code all the next day, and then go do a presentation that if that pre- presentation failed, the work that they had done for the last 90 days would have just totally gone absolutely to waste. And so all of these scenarios to say that I believe that people, and if you're that person, I'm going to give you, a, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to try to give you some hope in just a moment. People who have never ever been so totally against the wall that they either couldn't get bill or that they had to go 90 days without making any money while working 90 hour days or that have gone all night long multiple times to do a make or break deal that if you've never had to go all the way to that wall where you were so hungry, where you were so tired, that, that, that you were shaking, that, that you thought you might die maybe, that you thought the world might end if, if something didn't happen and yet you still pushed through it. If you're the type of person that's never been through that, I'm just going to be level with you. It is going to be hard for you that first year because when you don't make any money the first month, and nobody buys anything from you the second month. What do you have deep inside of you to hold on to that's going to say, you know what? I am going to make this work. I'm going to lose sleep. I'm going to wake up two hours before my wife does. I am going to go to bed three hours after the kids do. I am going to do whatever it takes. Now, here, here's what I want to suggest to you. If you're that person, I suggest that you go out and begin reading biographies of self-starters. And I want you to identify the point at which their back was up against the wall and that if they failed, if they failed, Ted Turner just bumped into my mind. Same idea. If you read Ted Turner's book, it's just amazing the number of times that his back was up against the wall and that he would have lost everything, everything, if, if he hadn't pushed through and made it happen. For years, Ted Turner would sleep in his office rather than commute for an hour because it would allow him two extra work every day. Okay, let's come back to this. I suggest that you go out, buy the biographies of people, Steve Jobs, Ted Turner, um, Paul Allen, Bill Gates, Russ Bunsen, Mark Zuckerberg, buy them and hunt for those opportunities where their back was up against the wall, and when you get to those opportunities, sit there and ask yourself, could I do that? What do I have to feel to do that? That way, when you get to the third month in your business and, and something isn't clicking, that you're still able to push through, that you're still able to stay up after your wife goes to bed, that you're still able to get up before your husband gets up, that you're still able to work during your lunch break at work, that, you, that you're still able to push yourself to the wall. Because I believe that in order to become successful online, you have to have that mentality. Now, having said that, are there a few people that just something just clicks? Yes. Occasionally that happens. But I believe that 95, 99% of the time it doesn't happen. And why should you gamble that you might be the 1% person? Why not just count on the fact that you're probably like the other 99% that start businesses and become successful? Treat it like that. That way you will succeed rather than fail when you hit that wall. So coming back to me, I've had this entrepreneurial background. And in fact, for the 10 years before I started my online business, although I was paid by other people, almost all of the work that I did was commission-based. 
okay? Um, you know, where I was either running sales crews and I'd get a percentage of what they bought, or I was, um, just, you know, just various things that I was involved in. Most of the way that I made my income for the decade before was getting paid on other people's performance, okay, or even getting paid on my own performance, but being paid on a performance basis. And so I was conditionally in my mind, I was, I, I was I was able to make that leap from being trusting someone else to make that payment for me to making my own payment, okay, to being paid by myself. And so I believe that what I've just shared with you is critical for those of you who, who are not an entrepreneur yet, whose back has never been up against the wall, who has – if you've never spent your last dollar, your last dollar or your last $10,000 or whatever – on something that's a make or break that could totally break you in a part of your life, okay, I, I just encourage you to latch on to what I've shared with you in the last 15 minutes and hopefully allow yourself to gain strength from that. Read the books I've suggested. Read more than just what I've just suggested and really get a feel for people's epic struggles that allow them to be highly successful. And so in my case, what happened to me was um, – I actually took a vacation like I do did almost every year in those days. I'd take a vacation down to Florida and go sit on the beach. And, and what happened this time was I actually had about three weeks off because I had been doing some contract work where I was, again, paid on a performance basis. been doing some contract work, and uh, one of the contracts was over. I had an opportunity to take something else in the future and actually spent about three weeks relaxing. And, and I want to say a week or ten days of it was like physically on the beach. And I was sitting on the beach, and I thought, you know what? I don't want I don't want to go back home. Okay, now obviously I did come back home, but I, you know figuratively I don't want to go back home. I, I want to be able to come here anytime I want to. I want to be able to ski as much as I want to. Um, I really want that freedom. How can I get it? And you know I'd started offline businesses in the past, and um, the drawback for me with an offline business always was, man, I got to have this office and I hire these employees, or you know I, I got to show up for these meetings. It really makes it really hard to go away for more than seven days. And, uh, you know, that was right about when the Internet was just kind of coming into its own. And, and I said, you, can, I, can I build something online? Can I build a real business online? And uh, right there on that vacation began doing a lot of the research that you folks have probably done over the course of the last few months, the past few years, and began to do the research to ask myself, how, how can this be done? How can this happen? What can I do? And after, and in fact, at that point, in addition to being involved doing offline work, I had been dabbling online for about eight months. So I kind of knew kind of some basics, but I'd never been able to make things happen. I'd never had my back up against the wall because I always had that paycheck coming in. Okay, it kind of goes right back to what we were just talking about. I didn't have my back up against the wall. And so I said, you know what, here's what I'm going to do. I got a little bit of money. I didn't have a lot of money. I couldn't retire on it or anything like that, but I had the money to tide, to tide me over for a few months. And I said, you know what, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start this online, and um, if it fails, I'll go back to work. And if it does not, then my life will be changed ever after. And I, I just want to share with you right now some numbers from the, the very, very, very beginning. Okay? That very first month that I began this business, I did a grand total. And I worked probably 40, 50 hours a week for four weeks, 160, 200 hours that first month. Okay, and and took in a grand total of $125. Now that's take in, so that was minus web hosting and you know minus some other things. Okay, now what made me go to the next month? Well, a lot of it was just drawing on that entrepreneurial drive, that exponential idea that I just shared with you, knowing that I could operate going all the way to the wall, knowing that next month could be a better month, and I did. That. The following month came back doubled the revenue the following month and did $250 a second month. Once again, worked between 150 and 200 hours. How do you keep going? How do you keep going when you're getting paid a dollar and less than a dollar an hour the first month, less than a dollar an hour the second month? What was that, a dollar twenty an hour? How do you keep going? And it, it kind of goes back to what I shared with you. I was able to deep, reach deep into that reservoir of having my back up against the wall. And I said, you know what? What are we going to do next month? 
And I said, you know what, here's what I'm going to do. I've been in this now for 60 days, and it's time to create my first product. I did that, launched it, did $900 that third month. Okay, once again, more than doubled the revenue from the month before. In fact, that was a three and a half times value. And so we're beginning to see this exponential thing that I've talked about in other teachings where what happens online grows and grows and grows, and it's exponential. And if you quit before that breakthrough happens, if you quit before that breakthrough happens, you never have anything. So the fourth month, uh, at this point, I was beginning to evaluate, you know, from a financial standpoint, can I continue to make $900 a month, and how long can I do that for, okay? And and at, at that point, I'm thinking, you know, I can't do it for a whole long time, but, hey, I tripled revenue last month. What can I stab at for this month? In the fourth month, I did just about $1,600 online, did another product, and sold that, did $1,600 that following month. This month, I did $3,840. So again, not exactly an exponential type of thing here, but consistently growing. And then uh, I, I believe that fifth month, I launched another product. And that was the fourth month, the uh, fifth month, fifth month, $3,840. And then the sixth month, launched a coaching program and did, I believe that month was $5,500 that fifth month. And obviously, I've continued to grow over time. What kept me in there those first three or four months? It was being able to rely on the fact that I can operate when I'm in the red. I can operate when my back is up against the wall. I can operate when nothing looks like it's going to work. And so what I want you folks to take out of this, that was how I was able to make that transition happen for myself. I've given a lot of background there in, in terms of making that happen. Um, let, I gave you the background. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to dig into a little bit about what, what, how did that success happen those first six months. Okay? The first thing that I did the first two months, all I did those first two months was write articles. I don't know how many I wrote. But I, I averaged the first 10 months, 10 months, I averaged about 150 a month. So if we could just say that it was average, it was probably a little bit more. But all, the, those two months, averaging 150 articles a month for those first couple of months. And then what I did, because I was writing those articles, I was building a list, I simply sent an email out to my list and said, look, you know that I've been writing an email every single day because I would send people clips and I'd send people links to the articles and I would send people links to be able to buy other people's products. I made any money those first couple of months we just selling affiliate products. So the third month I sent that email out and said, look, I'm thinking about creating my own product. What would you like to learn? And people wrote back and told me what I, they would like to learn. And so then I wrote a book about what they wanted to learn, and just an e-book, just a skimpy little e-book, 60, 70 pages, put a price tag on it, put it out there. And a lot of the people that had helped me decide what the topics were going to be with bought it. And, and, and you remember my numbers just now, 125 to 250, 900 the third month. You know what? I was hooked. I said, you know what? If I can almost quadruple revenue by writing a, a, a 70-page book that took me a few days of actual writing to write based on what people wanted to know, I said, why don't I do it again? So I wrote another email and said, you know what? This last one was such, such, such a success. What would you like me to teach you about now? And so they wrote me. They told me. I did the research, and I wrote the next one. And then the, the following month, the fifth month, um, I believe what I did there was um, I asked people what else they needed, and I put together – it wasn't exactly a book. It was more along the lines of like a package, useful tools. That's what they – if I remember correctly, that's what they said they wanted. I put it together, put a higher price tag on it, made money on that. The following month when I launched the coaching program, I wasn't even thinking about launching a co coaching program. I had no idea that it would really be a success. But what I did was I just sent an email out to my list, everybody on my list. It all starts with building that list. I built the list, had no idea at the beginning what I was going to do with it, but I, I just I communicate with my list. And I said, you know what? You know, I've had a lot of you saying, hey, I love those first two books. I love the product you created. And you, you, you're having questions about duplicating what I've, what I've been doing. You know, I, I wonder, I mean, would it be worth it to you if you were involved in a little coaching with me? And I had incredible response. People saying, yes, I'd love to be in your coaching program. I was blown away by the response. Just people on the list. And so I just wrote just a simple handwritten, basically hand-typed kind of thing. No sales letter ease, nothing. Just wrote it. Said, look, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to launch a little coaching program because you people have been telling me you really want one. I'm going to make it affordable. 
and um, but I'm not going to open it to everybody. If you really want to do it, you can tell me why you want to be in my coaching program because I have a feeling too many people are going to want to be in, and I want to work with you people personally. They wrote me. They told me what they wanted to accomplish. I picked the people. I really wanted to work with. I wrote them back. I said, could basically along the lines of congratulations, I've accepted you into the coaching program, and um, I would, I, you know, I'm, I'm going to work with you. If, if I'm going to do this on a first-come, first-served basis. All you got to do is make your first payment, and I'll start working with you personally. And uh, 22 people signed up to work with me that month, and I was blown away. And just absolutely blown away. Started the business from scratch, not really knowing what to do, not knowing what I was going to sell, having no idea really what I was going to sell for the first 60 days, just in blind faith writing articles to build a list so that I could ask the list, what do you want me to create? They told me I created it. The next month I asked them again. They told me I created it. The next month I created something else. Next month, I said, okay, folks, sounds like some of you need some coaching because of the questions you've been asking. Would you like coaching? Yeah, I'd love it. And that was the beginning of the rest of the story for me. And here's the thing. Here's the thing, folks. Every one of you can do it. Every one of you can do it not knowing what you're going to sell or who your clients are going to be. Just write articles and build a list and ask your list what they would like to learn about. Write an ebook, or better yet, what I teach now is record a training. I mean, an ebook takes hours and hours and hours to write. You know, three hour recording takes, well, three hours of time. Okay? Now I would say instead of writing an ebook to answer the questions, do a three hour recording and start selling it. Next month, do another three hour recording. You don't to know today what you're going to teach on. Build a list of people in your niche, it, it, whatever niche that you feel like. If it's the wrong niche, you find out two months later that nobody has anything. So you go back to the drawing board and start over. You have nothing to lose. You're not making money on that particular niche anyway right now. This is you're going to simply create for yourself a back up against the wall. What am I going to do to make it happen? Literally, you build that list. You ask people what they want. You create it for them. You ask people what they want. You create it for them. You ask them if they want coaching. If they've been buying your products, almost inevitably, a percentage of people will say, yes, I'd like to have coaching. You create it, and you give it to them. Folks, I know that sounds simple, and yet so many people spend months and months and months trying to figure out their coaching program, trying to figure out their product. Instead, start blind like I did and just start writing articles to build a list, ask the list what they want, and give it to them.